Okay, so this is continuing from a previous video where we went through the details of how to find all of these solutions to the solo growth model with population growth added in. Uh, and what, what did we conclude? What did we find in the end? Uh, well, focus on this column right here. So this is going to be our steady state discussion. So for uh, capital per worker, per worker capital, we have a steady state level of per worker capital equal to this. So it's a function of the savings rate technology, uh, population growth, uh, depreciation, and then um, you know uh, this alpha term, which is like the the capital share of income. And the main thing they focus on is are these two. Uh, basically, uh, the city state level of per worker capital is going to increase if the savings rate or technology increases, and the city state level is going to decrease um, if population growth or depreciation increases. And then over here we have the um, city state level for output per worker, and it, it is a legitimate you know it's a city state level because all of these things inside are constant again. Um, and similarly to per worker capital, per worker output is going to be positively related to te technology and savings. So if savings or technology increases, then the steady state level of um, per worker output is going to increase. But if the population growth or depreciation increase, um, that's going to decrease the steady state level of per worker output. Uh, and that should make sense, remember, because uh, per worker output was just that, you know, f of lowercase k, right? So per worker output is just a function of this thing right here. Um, you know, all we did was plug in the steady state level of per capita, per worker capital into the production function to find uh, the steady state level. Anywho, and then consumption and investment. Well, consumption and investment are just functions. They're just actually, they're fractions of per worker output. Um, you know, investment is just the savings rate times total output. You know, this total output is also equal to total income in our model. So you get a certain amount of income, and by definition, you save a portion of it. The portion you save is, is set by the savings rate. You know, that, that S is equal to like 20%, 30%, whatever. Whatever portion that is goes to investment that gets turned into capital. And then consumption is what's left over, right? So the savings rate is some number between 0 and 1. So 1 minus the savings rate is the rate at which people consume. So 1 minus savings times per capita output is equal to per capita consumption. Uh, turning to aggregate capital and aggregate outputs, uh, we get something more interesting. It's going to be, uh, it's a growth path, right? So per worker, uh, sorry, aggregate capital right here, so capital K star, is a function of all these things, and these are constant, right? So savings rate, technology, depreciation, alpha, all those are constant times the uh, current population, and this is something that grows. So that means our kind of assuming that our economy is at the steady state level of per worker capital, assuming it's you know reached that, converged to that steady state level, uh, what you're going to find is that capital, aggregate capital for these economies is going to be growing over time, and it's going to be growing with population growth. And then very similarly, uh, because output is a function of um, capital and labor, right? So remember our production function was the Cobb Douglas production function with uh, A times capital raised to the alpha times L to the one minus alpha. Plugging in the, the steady state level, uh, we find that aggregate production is going to be, uh, even if the economy is in the steady state level, aggregate total output is going to be growing through time at the growth rate of population. And then investment and consumption, you know, they're just a fraction of output. So they're going to grow at the same rate as output. So what does our solo diagram look like now that we've added in uh, population growth? Well, it looks like the following. So uh, once again, in the setup, we have capital per worker along the bottom. So as we change different levels of capital per worker, uh, we'll see that we have different values for this green line, which is uh, per capita output. Uh, and we have different levels for that break even investment line, uh, which is just equal to n plus g times k. So this is the, this is the um, so it, for example, if we were at this higher level of k up here, um, if we wanted to keep capital in the next period constant, uh, how much new capital would we have to, to add each period? Well, we'd have to add this amount right here. Um, so this is like 
uh, if you're starting off with this level of capital, this is how much capital is being restored at each period, hence break-even investment line. Uh, and then our green, or sorry, our red line right here is um, our investment line. So, for example, if we start off with a high level of per worker capital up here, we have this level of investment. Um, if we have start off at this lower level of per of per worker capital, we then have a lower level of investment down here. Okay, so we have all these lines. Um, really, the only thing that's added is we have this. Um, oops, wrong level. It's supposed to be a delta for depreciation. The only thing we've added is um, we've added an N in here. Yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> so it doesn't look that much more complicated. We have, uh, how do we find the steady state level of per worker capital? Well, that's where our break-even investment line intersects our investment line. So at exactly this level, we, have, we reach the steady state level of capital because any level of per worker capital down here that's going to imply that investment is greater than that break-even level, and it means we're going to converge towards the steady state. If we happen to be at a level anywhere above the steady state level of per worker capital, so say, let's say we're at this level of per worker capital, um, then th this amount is going to be destroyed each period. This amount is going to be invested. So the difference between the two is how much we're going to reduce per worker capital. So anytime we're at a, a level of per worker capital over here, of the steady state level, it's going to have a convergence. It's going to push its uh, push the capital accumulation equation is going to push the level of per worker capital down to the steady state. And in either case, it's going to converge to this level, and it will reach you know this level of per worker capital. Uh, and then the green line is per worker output, right? So per worker output is just a function of per worker capital, um, and it's that level right there. So uh, you know that's that's the discussion of the steady state. But then how how do things change if we take some of these levels? Well, we could uh, turn to our little Wolfram Alpha thing here and see the effect. So once again, just as it was without population growth, if we increase the savings rate, that's going to shift up our investment line, which shifts up the city state level of capital. So here's a low level investment. We see a low level of city state capital, and we see a low level of output per worker. If we shift up savings, we see that the steady state level of per worker capital shifts up and the steady state level of um, output per worker shifts up. Sweet. Same thing with depreciation. Remember the depreciation shifts our um, break-even investment line. So if depreciation shifts up, that's going to push down the state level of capital, which pushes down the steady state level of output per person. Now we've added in labor force growth, so that rate n. Uh, if we increase the amount of labor force growth, that's going to shift up that break-even investment line, right? So if we increase this number here, that means the slope of our break-even investment line gets higher, so that shifts up. So if we increase this, that shifts up, that pushes down the steady state level per worker capital, um, resulting in a, in a lower steady state level, uh, which results in a lower steady state level of output per worker. So if we started over here at this um, population growth level, we see a higher level of steady state capital per worker and a high level of steady state um, output per worker. We then increase population growth that shifts down the steady state level of capital per worker and shifts down the steady state level of output per worker. So why does an increase in the population growth decrease the steady state level of per worker capital and per worker output? Well, remember uh, um, a higher level of population growth means there's new labor being created. So in order to keep this per worker capital constant, uh, new capital needs to be created to give to those newly created workers, right? So in our little conclusion thing over here, we saw that output was just a function of labor force growth. So output grows at the rate that labor force grows. So if you saw that output is growing at a certain level, um, say, uh, sorry, let's say the population grows at some increased level, that means aggregate output is going to be growing at that level. But that doesn't affect per capita output. Per capita output is just some constant level. Constant, uh, the steady state level of um, output per worker is just set by these terms here. And then uh, in this little table here, I kind of made a summary of all the things that shift stuff and all the things that change growth rates. So, uh, you know, the labor market labor grows at rate n, we find that capital uh, in our steady state grows at rate n, we find that output grows at rate n, 
So if this n, the population growth rate changes, that's going to change the steady state growth rate of output, capital, and labor. However, capital per worker and output worker are constant in the steady state. You know, so the growth rate of output per worker, the growth rate of capital worker is a constant so long as you're in that steady state. However, if you shift any of these things inside, so if you shift savings, you shift um, total factor productivity, you know, technology, if you shift the growth rate, if you shift depreciation, um, that is going to change our steady state level of uh, capital per worker, and then by implication, that's going to change steady state level of output per worker. And as they shift, you know, as you go from one steady state level to a new steady state level, you're going to have some transition dynamics, but um, it's going to eventually stop once it reaches that steady, new steady state level of capital per worker and output per worker. So when we add in population growth into model, we find that it's a kind of a, a weird mix of steady states and growth rates, right? You know, per capita stuff is still constant, right? The steady state level of output per worker and the steady state level of capital worker is still constant. But uh, labor, you know, is by definition growing. And so even if our capital per worker is at a steady state, aggregate capital is going to be growing and output is going to be growing. So you have this kind of interesting mix that we'll discuss a bit more uh, when we do uh, some of the applications. Cool. So hopefully that was helpful. I think in total, you know, this is the second part video. <laughs> I spent more than 30 minutes going over all of this, but it's the 30 minutes that, you know, most professors like to avoid because it's pretty boring. So if you need to know it, hopefully it was helpful. Thanks and have a good day. Bye.